<clears throat> all right, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Shalom to the elders of GMS. Today's lesson is prove what's good for your soul, right? Uh, and of course, I'm referring to uh, the scripture in uh, Shirek, the 37 chapter, because um, just to like expound upon it, you know, in this ministry, you know, uh, you have a lot of different things, you know, uh, I'll just say in this life, you know, you know, you have a lot of different things that uh, you can get involved in, right? Or you can indulge yourself in. And some things, you know, may not be good for you, even if those things may very well be, you know, lawful, right? Because like Paul said, uh so lock it one second. Like Paul said in the first Corinthians, the sixth chapter, right? Because you may have certain things that are lawful for you to participate in. And when it, being as though it is lawful, it doesn't mean that it's expedient because of the certain, you know, situation that you find yourself in, because of the person that you are, how you might handle that particular thing. Because, you know, um, I'll give an example, you know, eating a eating 100 pieces of fried chicken, you know what I mean, is lawful, but it's not expedient because it's, it's not conducive to your health. Right. So apply that same concept to a, a lot of different things. Is it lawful to deal with a hundred women? Yeah, it is. But is it expedient to you, you know, being profitable in the ministry? No, it's not. Is it lawful for you to, you know, like, you know, go to go to the club or something like that? It ain't, it ain't, it ain't no law against that, right? But is it expedient to do that every night? No, it's not. So it's a lot of different things that you have to, you know, and this is where it comes into examining yourself right before that day of visitation, like it says in uh, Sirach, the 18th chapter, right? Where it says, examine thyself before the day of judgment, and thou shalt find mercy. In fact, let me just grab that real quick. So I write 18, and where is it at? 27. <clears throat> nah, so I write 18, and uh, is it 10? In verse, yeah, I so I write chapter 18, verse 20. Before judgment, examine thyself, and in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. So this is all a part of examining yourself. So in this ministry, right, you really have to see what it is that you need to cut back on. Because I'm speaking from experience, you know, just coming out of uh, certain things that I had to examine that might have been holding, holding me back. That I, you know, you know, the water, Yahweh, uh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, right, that he uh, allowed those things that free my life so that way I can stay more focused, you know, and, on, on a task at hand, which is ultimately serving Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Like it says in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, for this is the whole duty of man, keeping the commandments of the heavenly father. Right. So, you know, just a, a quick teaching on, you know, how brothers and sisters should be, you know, looking at different things, you know, in their lives and just, you know, making sure you're examining to make sure, you know, you, uh, you know, as profitable as you can be in the ministry, you know, because that's what this whole thing is about. So 1 Corinthians 16, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 12, it says, all things are lawful uh, unto me, but all things are not expedient, right? All things are lawful for me, but I would not be brought under the power of any, right? Because something may be lawful for you to indulge in, right? But indulging too much into it, you know, therefore allows that thing to have power over you and then may withdraw you from the truth, you see? So even with things that are lawful, we still have to maintain diligence. We still have to maintain uh, uh, discipline. Right. Because like it says, first Corinthians, the ninth chapter and the 24 verse 27 verse, it says first Corinthians nine. And I'm going to read it in verse 27 in the NLT. It says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what, what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself may be disqualified. So the point is, you have to be disciplined. You have to be rooted. You have to be grounded in this ministry. And a lot of times that comes. By, you know, you having, you know, a part of you being disciplined is having to cut stuff off that may not really be good for you, even though it's lawful. You see, and it's a lot of situations like that, especially with brothers, you know, and dealing with women and whatnot in the world and whatnot, that it can really be a uh, that could be a slippery slope. You know, uh, you know, maybe playing a game too much, watching too much TV, you know, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of different vices that can, you know, occupy your time here. You know, in Babylon, but if you overindulge in those things, they can actually lead to you falling out. And that's, you know, ultimately you got to watch and be weary of that. 
And that's why examining yourself on a daily basis is very essential to this ministry. You have to, right? You got to be real with yourself. You have to be real because your mind will try to play tricks on you and tell you, no, nah, no, nah, it's, it's cool. Like, so I'm, still, I'm still doing what I'm supposed to. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can still handle it. I can still handle it because, you know, your flesh going to want to continue to, you know, do that thing, you know, that uh, uh, that, that that may, you know, and, you know, um, that you may delight in. Right. I know we're watching TV. You may not want to get up off the couch. You may just I'm comfortable right now. man. I don't even fight like nothing. Nah, see. You know, I already did this, I did that. You know, you can do more, right? So this is this is this is what Paul is saying, right? By being disciplined, right? What an athlete does is even when they don't feel like doing something, they do it, right? You know, for that sport. And this is that this is that thing that we doing like an athlete. This truth, right? So and that requires a lot of discipline, right? So going back to First Corinthians, the sixth uh, chapter, verse twelve, it says, um. Read it again real quick. It says, all things are lawful for, uh, unto me, but all things are not expedient. It says, all things are lawful for me, but I would not be brought under the power of any. Right? That's the point, man. You don't want to be brought under the power of these uh, uh, of these things because that will lead to a, a bad end for you. Right? And this is why right here it says in Syrac 37 and 27, which was the, uh, the title of the lesson. Right? It says, <clears throat> it says, uh, my son, prove thy soul in thy life. And see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. Right. Because you may be uh, you may have an addictive personality, you know, you know, meaning like, you know, certain things you may go super hard in it. Right. So for you personally, you may not want to indulge in certain things, even if they are lawful, because, you know, with this particular thing, if you indulge too much in it, you particularly you're going to go crazy. Whereas though you might see the next man. Right. Or the next sister or whatever. And they are able to indulge in that thing while still maintaining a healthy fear of the Heavenly Father, still being disciplined and diligent. And it's, it's, it's different for everybody, right? So you can't look at somebody else's walk and then say, all right, well, they doing that and they still able to do this you know, and do that. It may not work for you, right? And that's why the scripture is telling you, my son, prove thy soul and thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it, right? So that's the point, man. And that all comes from examining the whole point. You have to examine yourself. Right. And you have to be real. You got to take your emotions out of the uh, uh, out of the uh, situation and really analyze and see, OK, is this affecting me? Right. Is this, is this affecting me being profitable in the ministry? Is this affecting me in doing what I'm supposed to do? If it is, then it has to go. And you have to have that resolve to say, all right, fuck it. This it, this, this got to go. Right. I can't deal with this. Right. And that's the mindset that, you know, that the Heavenly Father is looking for. Right. And if the heavenly father wants you, he's going to remove certain things out of your life. And you're and if you're spiritual, you're going to be able to perceive that. Oh, yeah, that's because the heavenly father ain't want me dealing with that. He ain't want me dealing with this situation or, or, or that or this or this. You know what I'm saying? It's not good for you. Right. Because if the heavenly father wants you, he's going to get you. Right. And he's going to keep you. Right. So verse 20. And you see that with, uh, 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 Jonah, Jonah, when he when he tried to run the heavenly father. Yeah, he had a big sea creature, you know, swallow him up. So that way he'd go preach on the Nineveh. So if the Heavenly Father wants you to do something, he's going he gonna to have you do it. And he's going to remove whatever he got to remove in your life, you know. And sometimes it may not be uh, the most, uh, like, how do I say, like, it may not always feel good, bro. You know, it may not always feel good. But you have, you know, have to perceive through the spirit what it actually is and, and take that on the chin. Right. So, uh Verse uh, Sirach 37 and verse 28 For all things are not profitable for all men Neither have every soul pleasure in everything So nobody's going to have pleasure in everything You're going to have different people who like different things And can handle different things And you're going to have other people who can handle things and, uh, and other things So that's that's just the way it is, man Right? And then sometimes what I also see Is that the Heavenly Father what, what He'll do is He'll let you experience certain things that you know, and sometimes in this ministry, you know, we we're we're you know very uh, dismissive of certain things when it comes to all right, what well, ain't they ain't profitable. All right, I'm gonna get that out of here. But then it's like you know what I'm saying sometimes that allure of certain things can be like oh yeah, well damn man, I sh shoot man, I, I I could take that and then still you know do what I'm supposed to do in the truth. I know I could, you know, and I have a father be like all right, all right, all right, I got you. Go ahead, test it out. And then you get in, you start seeing, oh, shit, I know. I see why the Heavenly Father wasn't, you know, throwing, throwing nothing like that at me. You know what I'm saying? I see why. You know what I'm saying? It's very, it's very uh, 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 distracting, right? Or, or, you know, you see a bunch of different things 
you know, and, uh, that, that comes with those uh, things that you, you know, lusting after the flesh for, right? You know, and you'll see why that the Heavenly Father, he didn't uh, give you certain things. He'll, he actually, he'll actually block a lot of the things from you, just like a parent does with his child, right? A child may want this and want that, but you don't even know. That child doesn't even, uh, is not even capable of understanding, right, why it is that you're keeping that from them, right? And that's the same thing that, that it is with the Heavenly Father. But sometimes the Heavenly Father will let us go through it so that way we can actually, you know, understand and then appreciate our situation where the Heavenly Father is blocking things from us even more, right? So let me go ahead and grab this in uh, Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. Right, because this this actually goes into King Solomon, who is Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation, right? Actually talking about folly and wisdom, right? So folly is a lot of things that usually well, folly is the things that you usually your flesh desires, right? Because um all of these things in this in his life really is like is is pretty much is is vanity, man. That's what you know King Solomon is actually talking about in uh Ecclesiastes, the first and second chapter. All right, so let me go ahead and grab this for y'all real quick. Second uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 12. Let me go ahead and grab it. It says, And I turn myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. For what can for what can the man do that cometh after the king? Even that which had been already done. And then I saw that wisdom excel of folly as far as light excel of darkness. So the heavenly father, he'll have you do what actually King Solomon did. or And you may not be actually seeking it out. Like he did, but ultimately what will happen is the Heavenly Father will put you in certain situations so you can see certain things and they'd be like, damn, yeah, the way I was living before, that was better. You know, I'm sitting up here desiring this, you know, and that, you, obviously that was after my flesh, you know, and um, then what happens is you'll start to realize, hey, hey nah, I, I, I'd rather stick where, I, where, where I'm at, you know, and that's what happened right here. It says, verse, verse 13, then I saw that wisdom excel at folly. As far as light excel of darkness, that's the point, man. King Solomon, he was like, all right, I'll set my, I'll set my, uh, I'll set my mind to know, uh, to know wisdom and madness and folly, right? So he, you know, he, he, he seen that. Okay, this is folly, this is madness, and this is wisdom. All right, the best out of all those is wisdom, right? And that's facts. So you know, it's something you know, and that's also another situation. Just explaining it and just you know, just expounding upon that and how the heavenly Father. You know, sometimes he deals like that. You know, he'll let you experience certain things just so you can actually understand and appreciate what it is that you actually have, man. All right. So, you know, that's 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 the message today. Right. Uh, basically prove what's good for your soul, you know, and, and give that to it, man. Right. You know, um, if something's not good for you and you see it and the Heavenly Father showing you clear signs, you have to hearken to those signs and just uh, gotta let that let, let it go. Right. Or, you know, what I'm saying you got to let it go. So with that, I want to give all glory, honor and praise unto my power. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I sincerely pray that you uh, sincere hearted, true believers were edified, exhorted and comforted. And with that, I want to give all glory, honor and praise unto my power. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom.